Hey everyone, just a quick disclaimer before we get into this video. Ratcatcher 2, Cleo Caso, is not a real character within the comic books, or at least she hasn't made an appearance within the comics just yet. She was a completely made up character for the Suicide Squad, so I just wanted to let you guys know that before you watch this and feel like I hit you with the old bait and switch. And I get it, she was great. She was the heart and soul of the team. She had a fun rat named Sebastian who was adorable. I'm all on board, but she's completely made up. In fact, a lot of liberties were taken with the source material for a number of the characters in the Suicide Squad movie, and that's okay. The actual rat catcher from DC Comics only really has a few issues dedicated to him. He does show up in a single panel, you know, here and there, but for the purposes of today's video, unless it's a major story, I'm just not going to cover it. That being said, let's go over the near complete history of the actual rat catcher from DC Comics. But before we get into that, I'd like to let you guys know about this awesome tool that I use to collect and search for comics, the Key Collector app. I use Key Collector almost daily when doing research for videos, as well as pricing things for myself that I'd like to buy. It's a massive database that helps track down the comics you want. They also have a subscription that alerts you to the latest key issues that are heating up in value and rarity. Trust me, there is no better way to look for gold out there. If you use our link, you can get two weeks free of the premium account status today. So follow the link in the description or go to keycollectorcomics.com forward slash key issues. The original rat catcher in DC Comics was a man named Otis Flanagan, and he made his first appearance in Detective Comics number 585, written by Alan Grant and John Wagner, with art by Norm Brayfogle. The story begins with multiple prisoners in a makeshift prison within the Gotham City sewers. One of the prisoners, going by the name Judge, manages to escape and, although terrified, heads for the surface. Judge continues to flee toward the surface, but is pursued by the Rat Catcher and his army of rats. Meanwhile, up above the surface, Batman is staking out a crime scene where some criminals are attempting to sell some firearms and other weapons illegally. Batman springs into action to take down the suave 80s Gucci wearing criminals, but he is distracted when Judge bursts through the sewers covered in a full rat suit. The rats are shredding Judge and essentially biting and eating him to death. Batman stops the rats and the crime and naturally thinks, hmm, there's something you don't see every day. Was, was that a good Batman voice? It was terrible? Okay, well, let's just continue with the video. Batman heads into the sewers to investigate. When the police arrive, they notice the man who was killed by the rats was none other than Judge Wyatt Hogan, a Gotham City political figure who had gone missing. Batman eventually comes face to... Uh, faces with about 10 billion rats and their leader, Ratcatcher. Ratcatcher attempts to kill Batman the same way, but Batman causes the rats to disperse with a flare from his belt. Ratcatcher decides to flood the sewers and washes Batman away while managing to escape. The next issue begins with Ratcatcher frantically making his way back down into his sewer hideout slash old man prison. Batman washes up on shore and gets his composure and then continues the search. Meanwhile, after an autopsy on the judges performed, Commissioner Gordon sends the police into the sewers to assist. It's determined that Ratcatcher was actually a man named Otis Flanagan, who was sent to prison after killing a man over a minor insult. Otis was a Gotham City sanitation worker who claimed to have been able to control rats. Otis's prisoners are determined to be all the people responsible for him going to jail. The police that Gordon sends into the sewers are quickly overrun by rats, one is killed, and the others are forced out. Batman, hot on Rat Catcher's tail, runs into a rat crew and uses a torch and pail of gasoline to burn them to ash. Batman is able to track down Rat Catcher to his hideout, but he's just too late. Otis has killed another prisoner. But without his rat crew, Ratcatcher falls to a ratarang. Oh, sorry, that was a typo. It was just a rat trap he picked up. Batman stops the Ratcatcher and sends him back to jail. Ratcatcher's next appearance isn't for a number of years until Batman 679. 
Following the events of Nightfall, Bruce Wayne has taken some time off from being Batman, and for a brief period, Dick Grayson is the acting Batman in Gotham City with Tim Drake as his Robin. Ratcatcher is before the parole board for his crimes discussed earlier when he is denied parole and unleashes his new gadget, the Rat Flute. He uses a flute to call an army of rats who help him escape. Dick and Tim arrive just in time to witness this escape, but fail to stop him as the rats overwhelm them. Dick travels alone through the sewers and is able to track Ratcatcher down by planting a homing device on one of the rats in the sewer and then following it to Otis. He lands a flying kick and uppercut, wham boom bam, and that's all she wrote. Straight back to jail, rat chump. Ratcatcher then appears often from here or there, but never in any significant capacity. And by that, I mean he just isn't an overwhelmingly massive force within Gotham. A few meaningful appearances he has is when he shows up later in Gotham when some people get trapped in a subway, he tries to feed the trapped Gothamites to his rats, but Batman and Robin arrive in time to save them, and start to lead everyone out of the sewer. Ratcatcher's rats assemble on top of the subway car and it collapses from their weight, which kills all the rats. Ratcatcher then releases a cyanide gas in a last ditch effort, but Batman takes Ratcatcher's mask off and forces him to lead the group out of the sewers. Ratcatcher has run-ins with Huntress while working for Clue Master and Robin in the sewers as well, but these aren't massive stories and he mostly acts as a henchman rather than some giant plot that he had concocted for world domination or at least to, you know, dominate Gotham City. But Ratcatcher did face Superman at one point as well, when he attempted to kill a physician in Metropolis. The battle literally lasts one page because, you know, Superman doesn't have time for that crap. However, Ratcatcher does eventually meet his demise in the comics. During the event Infinite Crisis, Ratcatcher is hiding out in the streets, being sheltered by the homeless community when a cop identifies him and attempts to arrest him. The cop knocks the homeless person over, and the homeless person transforms into an OMAC, a semi-sentient robot that hunts and kills metahumans. He identifies Ratcatcher as a threat, and then vaporizes him. And that is pretty much it for the entire history of the Ratcatcher within DC Comics. It's not nearly as heartwarming or heartbreaking as in the Suicide Squad movie, and as of right now, does not have a daughter to carry on his name. What did you guys think of Ratcatcher 2 in the Suicide Squad, and what do you think of Ratcatcher in the comics? Was it an improvement for the movie, or do you think they should have stuck closer to the source material? Let us know down in the comments, and also be sure to check out the Key Collector app using the code KEYISSUES to get your comic book collecting on. That's all I've got for you guys today. Remember the motto, it's Ratcatcher over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.